Say. La, 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 la. Oh, I don't believe it. The gas is not working. Come on. Oh, what was that thing? What is? I read an article, yeah, that it said that they was going to build a pipeline from Norway all the way to England to supply us with gas. I tell you what, call me crazy, yeah? I'm going to go and check it out. I'm going to actually go to Norway to see if it's true. Yeah. There it is down there, on the way to Norway now. And the thing that I'm looking forward to sussing out is apparently out in the ocean, there's this massive gas field called Umanlunga, and that is going to supply England with like 20% of our gas. The first thing I've got to find out is where all the gas is, and how are these crazy Norwegians going to manage to get it up? That means I'm going on a helicopter ride. Wow, this is brilliant. I love being in helicopters. We've just left Christian Sund and we're looking for the tie-off, which is like a massive crane boat, one of the biggest cranes in the world, and it's putting the templates down on the seabed. Is, is that it? What? Yeah. It's just down there. It's huge, man. Here we go. Here we go. Let's get down there. Ooh. The tie-off might look like a gigantic platform, but it's actually just here to install the templates deep down on the seabed. That was an incredible journey. It's like a science fiction film. You just come through the mist. You can't see nothing, you can't even see the sea. And then this small thing, like a dot appears, and then you land on this massive crane ship. Fantastic. I'm actually standing on the deck of the tile, which is the largest crane ship in the world. And it's so massive, you almost forget you're on the ocean. You have to check yourself just to see if it's still out there. But just to give you an idea how big it is, look at the size of that hook. That's on the end of the crane. That is massive. 850 metres below here is the seabed, and then another 2,000 metres is Umanlunga, which is the gas field, with this huge crane and this massive hook. They're going to lower template onto the seabed, and it's going to act as a gas platform. Each of the templates weighs 1,150 tonnes, and they're going to need two of them. Each has eight slots, and the wells will be drilled through these 2,000 metres down to the reservoir. The water temperature at the sea floor is 1.2 degrees below zero, so to stop the gas from freezing and clogging the pipes, they add huge amounts of antifreeze to the gas. Then the gas is transported 120 kilometers to Nihamna, but first they have to tackle another obstacle, the Storega slide. That was impressive, I must say. And now what we're doing is we're following the pipeline from Umenlanya, it's going to go past like the story of the big slope and then they're going to the Gao Bay where they actually have the spiders on the boat and they're the things that are going to dig the tunnel on the slope. So it's just all go. I can't, I can't stop. Come on, let's, let's get there. Yeah, go yeah, faster. Yeah, go. All right. <laughs> the Geo Bay is the control centre for some of the coolest ROVs in the world. Oh, there it goes into the sea. You work out the front bit, which is the grabber. There's two pipes going into that. One spurts out water at high velocity, breaking up the mud. The other thing sucks the mud out, and spurts it out in a back back tube there. The spiders are used to prepare trenches for the pipelines up the steep hills of Storega. In the control room, Halvard Snellingen has a firm hand on the game controller. It's actually, it's very easy to control. You could just have the uh, stick and you control it. Did you say very easy to control? Yes, yeah, just, just grab it. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Wow, look at that. And wow, now I can't can... believe I'm controlling it. Just like a PlayStation, that's phenomenal. Oh, it's broken. Oh, Take, it back takes there. a little bit more to wow, break it. Wow, that's brilliant, eh? Thanks very much. You're Cheers welcome. a lot. Well, how Hogwarts gets to play with the spiders, I have to move on. I'm going to take you now to uh, Nihavna. Yeah. It's on uh, Aukra. We've got to follow the pipelines all the way there. You know where the big uh, gas plants are? Yeah, wow. Yeah. You the boss. All right. When the Nihavna plant starts processing gas in 2007, about 7 billion euros would have been invested placing it amongst the largest industrial projects in the Western Hemisphere. This here is the site of the gas plant at Nihamna, and the gas comes from there all the way into the plant through those two pipes, them yellow ones there. And when it gets here, the condensate and the antifreeze is taken out. The antifreeze is recycled and used again. The condensate is like stored, shipped out and sold on. And then what you've got left is like pure gas. And that 
is then put into that pipe there, and that pipe goes all the way to England, 1,200 kilometers, and that has to take an absurd amount of pipes. I have to check it out. It's all go. Now I'm on my way to Farsen. Woo. Farsen is a tiny village on the southwestern coast of Norway. This project is huge. This is Farsen. It's where all the pipes come and are stored and treated. And to get from Norway to England, a distance of 1,200 kilometers, they need 100,000 of these pipes. But each of the pipes, every 100, thousand of them is individually marked like one two three and they have to go in as acts so number one has to go in number two number two has to go in three and when they've got them all together then they lay them out on the back of the ship and pour them out onto the seabed like that there's one number three that's no, no that's number three number six bring it back in. and to put down all these pipes on the seabed you need a pretty big ship that is awesome isn't it look at the size it's like a tower block you know, about 10 storey tower block back home. Unbelievable. The solitaire is like a massive industrial plant at sea. After anti corrosion and weight treatment in Farsen, the pipes are loaded onto pipe lay ships where they are welded together as a pipe string and lowered into the sea, all the way to Islington in England. This enormous pipeline, 1200 kilometres long, is called Long Lead. This is the last day of my journey, and there's nowhere that I haven't been on this project. The amazing thing is to think that it all started with a couple of people going out in the middle of the ocean and finding a gas field. And from there, all this started. From the largest crane vessel in the world, the templates are lowered some 850 metres down to the seabed. A drill ship will drill through the templates down to the huge gas reservoir, some 2,000 metres deeper. The pressurised gas flows up into the valve on the template, where antifreeze is added, this to avoid ice blocking the pipes due to cold seawater. Pipes are connected to the templates and the gas flows towards land, passing through some of the harshest underwater environments with strong currents, rugged seabeds and freezing temperatures. Approximately 100 kilometres from land, the escarpment of the 8,000-year-old Storega slide rises up, presenting gradients as steep as 35 degrees. To trench this huge obstacle for the pipes, two specially made excavators perform this almost impossible task. In addition to this, more than 3 million tonnes of rock will be placed on strategic locations to support the pipelines, and boulders have been chopped off to secure the route. As soon as the pipes reach Nihamna, the gas is separated from the antifreeze condensate and water. The gas is further processed before it is compressed for export. Then the travel continues through the world's longest subsea gas pipeline, almost 1,200 kilometres from Norway via the Sleipner platform to Islington in England. Then it will be distributed through the local net and hopefully heat up 10 million cups of tea a day for the next 30 to 40 years to come. Right, first things first, let's play that gas bill. Then I'll have a nice cup of tea. At least I know where my gas money is going on. Big ideas. Oh no, I... I haven't paid my phone bill, have I? Oh, what a donut! Oh, oh, and the electricity bill! Oh, 